Hello all, uh, my name is Kevin Matthews and this morning a list was posted on the OMP listserv uh, asking a question about management of calcaneal fractures and I have uh, a couple designs that I use and I'd like to share with y'all as part of my uh, series on that. I'd like to get some of the videos out there uh, of, for some of the techniques that I use. For, to manage a calcaneal fracture, and, and I'm talking about the more acute uh, fractures where you actually want to unweight the calcaneus and then perhaps later be able to add weight to the calcaneus uh, as the, the patient heals. What I found to be a very, very interesting and very effective design is a full wraparound AFO. Uh, when you get total contact, it's pretty easy to unweight uh, the foot and the ankle if you follow just a few simple techniques and principles that I employ in my uh, practice. I like this design because of the total contact, intimate fit, very thin plastic, fits in shoes, allows very, very uh, diverse footwear uh, selection, and it's very effective. It works basically like a cast, but it is very effective at unweighting. Uh, I won't go over how I used to go, what all I used to go through to try to unweight a foot, but I will say that a technician once mentioned to me that you know, why don't you just cut the cast rather than do all the, the build-ups and adding of a false bottom that I used to do on my negative cast. So, and, and when he asked that, I said, well, you can't do that. But then after I thought about it, I thought it was a brilliant idea. And so on the, the one that I was working on, I just started all over and did it again. Uh, and how I do it is I take the negative cast and right above the ankle, I cut it right here uh, at the narrowest point, And then I separate it a half an inch and then add tongue depressors and staple it together. I put lines so that I know everything is lined up and I separate it a half to five-eighths of an inch and then I reseal it and then I pour it. And by doing that, I've effectively dropped the heel down about a half an inch. Um, now all I need to do is get tight modifications through hydrostatic compression of soft tissue when we drop the heel down a half an inch and the patient applies this. When they put this on, basically I tell them you know, you put your foot in this thing and then you raise your heel up about half to three quarters of an inch and then you strap it on and then when they step down, they drop but they, the heel doesn't hit bottom. And I have on many instances been able to get 100% weight bearing. Um, again, the, you need to have the right patient for this particular design. It is not very easy to operate. In order to put it on, you've got to basically get a hold of this, open it wide, and you have to be able to do it behind your leg, open it wide, and then slide your foot in, okay? So we're not talking about the 70-year-old woman, although I'm not saying all 70-year-old women would be excluded from this design, but you need to choose your patient uh, carefully. Um, but it is a very effective design. Basically, we take 1 8 inch polypropylene, and we stretch the heck out of it when we pull it, to end up with about a 1 16th inch thin uh, piece of plastic that fits in the shoe. You need to get a good intimate fit except in certain areas. You need to build up your malali, you need to elongate your buildups because they are going to move up and down. When you take weight off of this foot, the heel's going to come up. When you step down, it's going to drop down. So if, 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 if your malali are rubbing, that's a deal breaker. Another thing, you have to build up your instep. And I found this through trial and error and having to remake, <laughs> remake them because if you don't allow them the ability to plantar flex in the brace, raise the heel up, and then strap it down, uh, if they can't rise up, well, then they can't get the unweighting. So I basically build up here and elongate the buildups here and also exaggerate the, the, uh, the base of the fifth a little bit too. I've had issues there. It's thin plastic. It's easy to heat and push out a little, but you can't get much and it is thin. So you got to be real careful when you heat and, and stretch it out. Now you can also put ventilation holes in here. I didn't in this one. This one's a sample. Uh, but it is a very effective tool at managing, at unweighting the foot and ankle. It is amazingly effective. Now, what happens over the long term? Basically, this works like a cast. So a patient is in this for a period of weeks. So you have to be able to manage soft tissue fluctuations. How I do that is I give all these patients a, a, a couple AFO socks uh, and also prosthetic socks. I use the Knit Right Stretch socks and I give them 
two three ply and two five ply socks and I cut the toe off and almost everybody's a medium and I go with a long one 18 inches or so uh, cut the toe off they put on an AFO sock then they pull the prosthetic sock on just above the malay and uh, basically they get we get a tighter fit in the calf when they're consistently wearing a five ply then I have them come back in and then I add an eighth of an inch of material I like P-cell it's soft but, but durable more durable than plastizote you could use P-lite also I use P-lite in my PTBs but and, and basically you can manage the condition that way this is a very effective design it works great to unweight the heel this is for temporary conditions healing conditions say osteomyelitis uh, calcaneal fractures, talus fractures, anytime you want to, want, want to unweight the distal tibia, talus, calcaneus. Once the weight shifts forward, if you have issues in the midfoot, you're weighting the midfoot so it's not near as effective at those areas of the foot. We're talking primarily calcaneus, talus, distal tibia. Uh, very effective design. For, the more, for conditions that are more chronic and, and more, uh, more lengthy, like uh, I did a two-hour video on fabrication of the PTB, and I, I've done lectures uh, on, on the fabrication of the PTB. Uh, and this is the full plastic PTB. I do the same thing here, only here we, we use thicker plastic. This is a much more durable design. I do unweight. I do get patellar tendon bearing. I do get a tight ML. I do the traditional uh, PTB mods, but I also do the cut and separate deal where I get hydrostatic compression of soft tissue. I could probably eliminate the top of this, but I find that you know if they, it really helps patients line things up when you have a patellar tendon. And if you get a, if you make these correctly, they fit really well. And uh, you know that's a that's a whole two hour lecture on just just the basics of, of making this and modifying the model, but. It's, it, this is a very effective design for the more chronic conditions that need to be managed long term. The, the guy that I did the video on was a Vietnam veteran who had gas shrapnel bouncing bed. He popped up, blew one leg off and really damaged the other one, osteomyelitis, year and a half in casts and then left with, a, with, a, with not much of a leg after that. Cannot tolerate any weight in the heel. So basically I made him this and he did marvelously in it and uh, he's still wearing it to this day. Uh, but in your PTB, use, a, use P light, don't use a soft material. You need this to be consistently thick. And the same thing, as they atrophy, you can add material. This guy is an atrophying. This was a 20 year old injury, so he's still going, going strong in the original design. Uh, one good thing, though, is one thing I teach is sock management. It's important to, uh, to maintaining that proper fit. Also, as they wear this design, just, you'll have, uh, just like in prosthetics, you'll have soft tissue variations during the day so I tell them if you start feeling that heel hitting the ground or you get any pain stop loosen up the straps reposition the foot and tighten everything back down again and you may carry some socks with you if, if, it, if it tends to be an issue of, of, of fluctuations during the day I don't add padding until they're consistently wearing a five ply sock so anyway I think that this is a great design uh, there's only so much I can go over in 10 minutes but I think that everyone will get the gist of it. Cut it, separate it a half inch, very tight modifications up here, very thin plastic to allow for donning, and uh, punch holes in it if you want. Just know that eventually this thin plastic will crack. You'll get four to six months out of this design, but it's a good tool to have in the box, and uh, I'll be happy to entertain questions. Just probably it'll take time for me to get back to everyone, perhaps. But uh, anyway, just my two cents on unweighting and my two designs uh, for unweighting AFOs. Thanks for your time. I hope you liked it. Have a great day.